My name is Brian Vanderbeek, and I'm a photographer um, for both editorial and commercial work, and I'm based in Singapore. And I've been working with Samsung probably for the past three years, um, developing content, but I've also been a Samsung user for probably the past eight years. So you will see some of the images here span back to the S10 Plus. So we have S10, S20, 20, 21, 22, 23, and a couple of 24, all right? So the thing is, when you talk about... Okay, so as a photographer, usually, I still remember when I started off photography, I would go out, I would carry as much gear as possible, which is always cool, right? When you start off, the more cameras you have, the cooler you feel. And then you get older, your back starts hurting. Uh, it's not quite as fun anymore. And <clears throat> then when you go on vacation, you start to wonder, which is better? What do I carry? What can't, can I not carry? And how little can I carry? And I would say in the last three or four trips that I've gone to, it's very interesting where I can go for a work assignment and I can bring all my equipment. And when I'm done and I extend for my personal use, I can leave all my work equipment uh, back in the hotel and I just take out the camera and start to shoot. So the question is, what do you really need to bring all these big things for anyway? It depends on your use case, but I think that these days, a lot of what we do is we take pictures, we share them online, social media, with friends, and, and, ha <clears throat> and a handphone is more than enough to do that. So the thing is people still have that misconception. Well, actually, I think it's getting to the point where... Um, the phones are very widely accepted as a means to capture images. I remember taking photographs when the phones had one camera, one lens, and you could only do everything in that one fixed thing. The picture quality wasn't great. You take it because it's what you had with you. Uh, but these days, if you guys look at the cameras behind, uh, the S series have three, the, the Ultra has four, but it looks like a lot more because there's lots of punch outs and holes, right? Um, and I think the fun part about the handphone is it's so unobtrusive. You don't have to take out the big camera and you still get great images that you can share with you. So you will see a few of these kid images because I do take vacations with the family. And some people will tell me, oh, the handphones, you can't take pictures of running kids. And I will challenge you and say that you can, uh, even though they're not really running. Um, but I think one of the important things about travel is the fact that you see things and you capture them and the important thing is to share. Now, one of the things that people are very used to are going to destination places and looking for that one photo. So they will go there and they'll say, oh, I remember seeing this building. I remember seeing this lighthouse. I need to go and capture uh, this place in this style, uh, <clears throat> which is great, right? Because you see things uh, online and you're very excited about seeing that in real life. But my challenge for most budding photographers or people starting out is that the journey there is just as important as what you see there. So the camera on your phone is with you at all times. Don't just keep it there and surf or watch videos when you're traveling because there's so many things for you to see. And I found that having this small thing with me at all times uh, makes it much easier to just see something and capture it. Um, so the good thing about having options, different focal lengths, you have your wides, you have your mediums, you have your, your zoom lenses. Personally, I never thought I would use the zoom so much because in my personal use, generally, uh, when I started off photography, I was always kind of like a 24mm kind of guy, which is what most of the cameras have as their standard lens these days. So that worked for me. But then I've realized that sometimes you do need something longer. I'll show you some photos later where you do need something longer to compress your shot. You do need something wider where you can show, you know, a scene in its entirety. And sometimes you just need that standard lens. So a lot of, a lot of the things that we look out for are things like symmetry, things like rules of design. We look for repetition. We look for graphics. But at the same time, it's about experiencing, right? It's about things that we go out and see. It was very funny, I was having lunch in Melbourne with a colleague and I saw this lady go there for a smoke break and I realized that her pants were exactly the same as the background. And then I, I because you know, I was having lunch and it was quite far away, I just kind of zoomed in and I was taking pictures with it. 
And then after that, I went up to the lady and I, and I told her, I said, you know, your pants really nice, they match the wall. And she's like, really? Oh, I didn't even notice. And then like, I would send her the photo straight away and she was so happy. Um, but it's, a, it's one of those things that I think you never stop looking. And you should never stop looking. Even when you're do, doing something else, um, it's very fun to keep looking out for something different. Uh, architecture, things that kind of interest you. I think it's one of the, the tenets that I take away with me. When I started off in photography more than 25 plus years ago, that feels very old. Uh, but my very first internship, I remember it was at a newspaper. And my boss was telling me, <clears throat> asked me to take every photograph that I ever shot and, oh, in that newspaper and make contact sheets. Not the contact sheets that you get now, but the actual printed contact sheets. And he would sit there and he would go through everything with me sitting there watching and he would circle certain things. And after he was done, he said, you know, Brian, what do you notice about all this? And I looked at it and I was like, well, oh, I don't remember taking half of these pictures. And so when we worked, for assignments, you know, it's not like last time when you were shooting film and you had to just take one photograph and you walk off. Uh, we would, oh, hello, John. <laughs> we would take multiple pictures of the same scene, you know, going from left and right and trying to get that best angle. And then we would come together and choose the best one. But one thing I realized was that the pictures that I was mostly happy with were the ones that I didn't have to, or I don't remember taking. And so what my boss said, and he was like, you know, if you see something that excites you, that interests you, just take a picture because if you are interested in it, somebody else will be too. We see this in Singapore every year, but it's nice when you are not in Singapore and you see something similar, right? Again, it's about, if you see, one of the things that you'll see in my images um, and one of the things that I really try to get everybody to, to shoot is to not set things up. So when you see pictures that I put up, they, I don't say, okay, kids, you run down first, you roll down second, let's all go in this way. It's things that happen as is. So having a phone that is fast, having a camera or something that is instantly um, ready for you to take pictures, that helps quite a fair bit. This is, the gentleman behind there is John Heng. He's one of the very accomplished food photographers in Singapore. So I'm a bit pious that now I pull up a very basic food photograph, but don't, don't make fun of me, John. All right. But, like I said, very versatile. You know, everybody likes to take pictures of their food, right? Sometimes it gets annoying, so I try to minimize it. But every once in a while, something looks pretty. You know, you want to flex that you had lobster, that kind of thing. Now, one of the things that I also try to tell people, in order to make an interesting photograph, uh, you have to be willing to get close. And I have to say that using a phone to take a photograph actually does take away the scare factor for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people, when they see someone coming in with a handphone, it's not as daunting as somebody coming in with a big camera. So using a handphone does allow me to get very close. And because it's so small and the way that you can shoot, it's very easy to just kind of bend down and shoot your way through it. So you look for things like your framing, you look for organized chaos, right? And it's... When we go through life, we see pictures from where we stand, right? So we are walking and we see people do things. So we see everything from a distance. But one of the interesting things to me that makes a photo different is to put somebody in a perspective that they wouldn't usually be in. So you wouldn't normally stand somewhere here, right? You wouldn't normally look for certain things from certain vantage points. So you see a lot of photographers go out on assignment. You see sometimes they'll go high, they'll go low, they will take very strange... Um, perspectives, but it serves to bring you to a slightly different place uh, and show the viewer a point of view that they don't usually see. Even something like this, which is so normal there, was kind of funny to me because it's just, everything's just kind of singing, right? Sometimes when you see something on a screen like this, yes, sometimes the image can break up, but generally uh, the fact that you have a 20, 30 time zoom in your pocket helps quite a fair bit. And it's all about the moment. I think I've got several photos of this, different scenes, different ways. Um, I think the misconception a lot of people have is that photography is about one shot, one kill. I take a picture, that's good, and you can walk off. And sometimes if, you, if everything falls together, that is the case. But a lot of the times it's about waiting, it's about looking for that, waiting for that moment, seeing the potential in an image, and then taking the photograph when it comes. 
some of these things will probably look very normal. Some people look at it, ah, why you take this type of picture? But to me, it kind of encapsulates the places that I've been to, the different kinds of people that I see. And sometimes it's about something, finding something different. It's just to see a different way, look for something that stands out. Um, it's about taking pictures of your kids, right? So again, you will see a few of these people repeated. But it's important to always know or see something that has a potential for a picture and when you see it, you take a photograph. Okay, la, this feels very cheap. You will see some kid pictures, but it's not all kid pictures, so it's not all the cheating ones. Again, you wait for them to fall, then you take the photograph. Then if they cry, you can pick them up after that. So why do I take photos when I go on travels? I think it's very, I find myself very fortunate. I do photography uh, as, it's my livelihood, right? So I actually work as a photographer. But the thing that I have a lot of fun with, and I've realized it's not the case amongst a lot of photographers, is that even when I'm not shooting for work, I shoot for fun. And I think it's almost that balance that I have to shoot for myself, take pictures for myself to keep everything balanced. Because when I'm spending too much time doing work it, and it becomes a job, it's not fun for me anymore. So it's very important to, to have that center, have that balance and try and get something different. So a lot of the times when you go to places, when you see things, like I said, you will look at images that other people take of those places. Um, so that's your research, right? Before you go for a holiday and you go plan your itinerary, you're like, okay, I want to go to this place, I want to go to that place. Uh, I want to go to the, the museums. I want to go to shoot this building and so on and so forth. But when you're in there, there's a lot of things that you don't recognize. Um, and that is interesting to you. So for me, like, I kind of like the fact that this place had spaces for people to just lie down and just watch. Watch this short film that it kept looping and it's just really cool. I'm competing with the, the rain, so apologies. So... <laughs> okay lah. Hopefully there'll be no more bird shots. But seagulls generally very photogenic and they kind of float and hover. So it looks quite cooler than it really is. Now, we all do selfies. We do wee -fees. It's very common to do that. Okay, come, everybody come together. Let's take that photograph. But sometimes when you try and do something a little bit different and you still want to get everybody in and it's for yourself, it's for your family, you know, there are different ways of, to work around that and try to get into different pictures. Now, one of the things I've also realized is a lot of it is luck. So in this case, it was one of those dreary days where we were sitting inside and having dinner. And then I looked outside and I saw that the light was changing. And I was like, oh. And I had to tell the, tell the whole family, okay, you guys just wait for a while. I'm going to go outside and have a look. And I rushed outside and I remember seeing that the sun was setting and it was just this really crazy purple, pink kind of sky. And... I think that's fortunate for me that every once in a while I get lucky enough to find these things to go out and see. Okay, like, if you can't hear, please feel free to tell me to speak up. Also, I have a Singaporean tendency to speak much faster than most people can follow. So if you don't understand, just tell me to slow down, all right? I have a lot more kids which is expected, yeah. So images come at the most unexpected moments. Waking up early in the morning and looking out the window on your last day of a vacation can lead to an image that you can remember um, quite vividly. Or being curious is another thing that I will try to tell a lot of budding street photographers or people who are on vacation. You know, I think the best parts, how many of you like to go on tours? I think I've realized that tours make it very easy, very accessible, but uh, a large number of people are starting to enjoy going on a vacation and getting lost. And so getting lost is probably the best way to explore new things. And not just getting lost, but looking around and, you know, picking down hallways. Oh, really? There's still another bird. Yeah. So one of the things I was telling you about is that having the different kinds of lenses make a lot of difference. Um, so technically, I'm a person that likes to show a lot of wide angles. But every once in a while, when I see something like this, where you can compress an image, having 
a long lens that allows you to bring the image in, or having a lens that allows you to compress the foreground and the background and bring everything together will get you an image that um, you don't necessarily get from shooting a wide angle all the time, right? So there are different ways to see how different lenses react. The long and short of it is if you have a very long lens, so you're five times or 10 times, it brings everything together. It kind of collapses your picture together and flattens it. If you shoot with a wide angle, like you wouldn't see the guy in the front and then the skyline would be really small in the background. So it's just a matter of, and nobody really takes formal classes anymore. It's all about experimenting, right? So one of the things that I would suggest if you go for your vacation is to, if you have a camera that has multiple zooms on your phone, something that can go from a wide angle to a zoom, try to take an image that you like with a different focal length each time. So you can take that same image, you say, oh, this will look nice with this. Take it and then challenge yourself to zoom in and try and find a shot or to, to zoom out and get even wider. I, I find beauty in chaos, you know, when the crowds around. Um, and again, another example of being able to shoot with a longer lens to compress your image getting one thing sharp and things start to blur out as you get to the back. And again, the whites. So the whites sometimes give you that sense of space, that openness. So what do you do when you're on vacation? Right, you eat, you shop, you walk around, and all these are opportunities for you to take pictures. Um, this is the Shrine of Remembrance, I think it's in Melbourne, and it's one of those places where you go inside, and there's a lot of exhibits, and then there's this long walk upstairs. And if you want to go upstairs, you can, you know, walk up to the roof, and you know, after walking around the whole day, you can be a bit lazy, but if it offers you a different perspective, I just say go. And it's fun to just go up and see other people, and have images that try to tell as many stories as possible in one image. This is happens way too often, right? When there's beautiful things to see and everybody's on their phones. Which is very ironic, considering the fact that I'm telling you to take all these pictures, but on your phone. So for all I know, this guy could be editing his pictures, right? Fair enough. Another case of using a zoom lens, where you can compress your images down. So, very interesting to try all these different functions, all these different zooms. Now you can say that it's very sneaky, but one of the things that I like about a phone is because it is so small and so unobtrusive, people don't necessarily see you. And it's not noisy, right? You're not gonna have a big clack every time you take a picture. So please, no upskirts, but what I'm saying is that you catch people in their natural poses. You catch them in their natural state of being and to me, that is the best. I guess when you look at your parents' pictures, you get a lot of group photos, right? Everybody's together. And then you fast forward, you know, to the 90s, and everybody's group photos, and they're doing the peace sign and the L signs. And, um, and now it's the Wi-Fi, so everybody's shooting themselves. But to get people in a natural state, to me, is still, still feels very short. And sometimes it's about waiting for the right moment, right? As I mentioned before, um, you see the potential for an image and you stand there and you just wait. Wait for the right people to come along. This is, I waited very long, la, and it's not perfect. There's a guy at the bottom with a hat. But if you don't see, you won't realize. So, act blur. Can you see, can you see? Bottom left. Yeah. It's just almost perfect. But sometimes, okay, it's part of the story. Light is something that's very important. Now, in Singapore, people will say, I've heard too many people say, ah, yeah, Singapore, nothing to take pictures. I will disagree, but I would say that sometimes when you go overseas for your vacation, everything is new, so it's very easy to take pictures. It's very easy to see how the lighting is different. It's very easy to feel very different and feel excited about taking pictures, which is why taking photographs when you're abroad is probably one of the best and most exciting ways to take photos. So yeah, it's about light. And the fundamental, at the end of the day, it's all about light. It's about finding the way the light hits things and seeing how they isolate certain people. Um, not so much light here, but yeah, weird stuff. 
Okay, so again, light. One of the things that you need to notice as you're out, when you're out and about for your travel, is to see the quality of light, to notice how people are interacting with the spaces that are around you. Now, I don't want to go into too much technical skills. We can talk a little bit about it, but one of the things that when you look at photographs, um, what makes a good photograph other than, you know, nice light? A lot of the times, it's a moment, it's the leading line. So I think most of you know the rule of thirds, which means you break the camera, you make the photo up into thirds, you put the subject somewhere on the left or right. Um, so in a thing like this, you have your rule of thirds, you have your leading lines, you have a kind of a fun moment. It's the, the more you can get, the more interesting your picture can be. So you have your framing element here, in that, that big atrium, and then you have the light, and you have that person walking, it kind of isolates that. And okay lah. It's one of those slices of life that I personally find very endearing. People will be like, ah, voyeur. No, but it's, it's a very nice moment when you see a very old couple still hanging out like that. I didn't say jump, but I knew that they were trying to compete with each other and see who could jump further. So it's, it's a matter of getting yourself into a position to take photographs. Um, it also helps when your phone is waterproof, so you're not so worried when, when inevitably it drops in. Okay. Um, I think one of the things that excites people or makes people look at a photograph and go, cool, is that split second, that decisive moment when you get an image that could be normal but is a little bit different. You know? And timing is everything in that. So when you get something like this where the person's almost touching the pool, it can be quite fun. Again, we talk about the zoom lens. So I'm going to keep repeating these three points, and I apologize if it comes across that way, about wide, medium, and, and long lenses. Okay? Um, a long lens can also make, can, you can cheat and make your place look much crowded, more crowded than it really is. Um, you will, so, sorry, let me go back. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I'm very distressed when I see so many people on their handphones all the time, like everywhere. Like every time you get a crowd photo, like it's this, people on their phones. And then I've even gotten a lot of street shots where I, and you'll see them later when I do a long shot down a busy street and everybody's on their phones. Okay, but things to look out for are moments. We talked about moments. We talked about uh, rules of design, so reflections in this case. And you don't often see a bunch of aunties in wheelchairs hanging out. So keep your eyes open for that kind of stuff. And... Again, it's one of those things that you have to wait for. So this was in Bangkok, and I think, and they have this big thing that drops different shapes of water. And there's this couple, quite lovey-dovey there, cute-cute, and then I realized they were dropping hearts, right? So you have to kind of wait, and the phones have this burst function. Okay, that's a bit cheating, but, you know. You, if you turn on the burst, it takes multiple shots as the things fall, and then you can choose your, your peak moment, and to me, this one worked. Now, I think that when we go out, a lot of the times, you guys remember, right, when you used to go when you were young and you go for photos and somebody would be like, okay, come, let's take a, a picture with the building in the background and you're like, go back, go back, go back. And you take a photo and then it comes back and you're the person like that size and the building's big. And so I think one of the ways, instead of just having to capture the building all the time, we capture the, the scenes around, the scenes inside. Oh yeah, this is part of the don't get your phone wet thing, but it's okay, it will still survive. So rather than just shoot images of places, I always like to incorporate. I think one of the things you'll realize is that I like people in the images. I think that it gives it scale. It gives it some, I mean, you can't have everything without people. But having a person or people in your images kind of ties things in together, gives you a sense of scale, tells you um, the kind of people that frequent the place. Uh, this is an image of that doesn't need people. I think it will look weird with people. But this was essentially the same place I took this from one direction, I turned around, and that building is on the right-hand side. So it's literally just turning 90 degrees, changing your focal length, and getting com something completely different. Oh, 
Oh, look, no phones. Oh, wait. Is there any phones? No. Okay, so this is another thing, right? Every time you're going to go to a place with a lot of people, you want to kind of do that zoom in shot. You want to try and get that shot where you can see, show how packed it is. And this one really was packed. Um, and so you switch to your long lens. For those of you who have your phone, yeah, go to your three times, your five times, uh, ten times if you have your ultra. And you'll be able to kind of compress all the pictures and show just how many people there are. Again, we talked interactions. So interactions between kids, interactions between strangers. So these are complete strangers. Uh, of course, we are waiting for a cab, lah, sitting there, waiting for a grab. And then my son starts, he sees toys, he gets very excited. And then they are all taunting. They're like, hey, you want to come play? You want to come play? And then they became friends. So kids are great. So always remember, there are pictures to be taken everywhere, right? So street photography doesn't mean you need to be walking around. It can be you in the cab, leaving. It can be you doing a drive-by shooting. As you're driving by, you're just looking out the window and you say, oh, that's kind of cool. It could be finding moments anywhere. So these few pictures are all from that same grab, right? Just looking out the window, just trying to find. But then again, you also get the walking past shots, right? So you're walking past, you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. The uncle with the pharaoh kind of t-shirt on his head. This to me was actually one of my funniest. I, I thought it was very funny. Like, why would you be in Bangkok on a motorcycle carrying a helmet and not using it when the traffic's so bad and it's so dangerous? But there you go. So, always prepared, no? literally. Like, when I sit in the cab, the phone's in my hand. I'm kind of holding it. I see something and I think most of you should know that there are quick launch functions. So for me, it's double click on the power button, the camera comes up, and you start to take the picture straight away. If you don't know, you can come and ask me later, we can set it up. I think that this is not necessarily travel for fun, this is travel for work, but to have sitting in the car, getting out there early in the morning, like 5 a.m. looking for sunrise, you know it doesn't happen, but looking for sunrise, and um, you just feel tempted to want to try and make different pictures. I have all my equipment with me and I'm taking pictures, but every once in a while it's still nice to take something small out and try something different, right? This was the... Sometimes it's easier to close your eyes when you're driving in some countries late at night and somebody's driving you and you don't want to see death coming. So you just kind of pray that you make it there alive. Um, but sometimes you just have to peek and make sure that you're still alive. And so, yeah, you can capture that too. This one is... You have to go to Japan, see Galaxy, must take picture to show. La. There you go. Fan service. This is last year. La. I say S23. You're right, correct. Okay, again, zooming. Perspectives are very diff important. You'll see a couple of these. And I don't know, I always like shooting in Japan. It's just one of those places that is very exciting. I think one of the great things about photography is that it brings you to go to, it makes you want to go to places that you wouldn't necessarily go to. So a lot of the times, and you can ask people who do this for, for work, or even for fun, they, they see an image there and it says, oh, that would be much cooler if it was from there. And they'll find their way up somehow to a vantage point that you can get something interesting. So for me, it was like, hey, this one looks quite nice, huh? That's a crappy day. Mount Fuji is somewhere at the back, but you can't see it because it's all covered. And you're like, well, I came all the way here. Let's find a picture, right? So then I go upstairs and I'm like, oh, that's quite cool. There's a little place here and you can have lunch and look out. Okay, the next day it got better. For those of you who like to travel to Japan, which is half of Singapore, um, don't go during summer. When I stepped off the plane, it was 39 degrees, and it's not fun. And Mount Fuji without snow looks very naked, so right? Like, it's a bit...
I cannot stress this enough that pictures happen everywhere. And it is very important for me, at least. And for most people, if you're going out there to see, it's... I know that a lot of people, when they go for vacations and they start taking photos, people are like, hey, don't always take pictures. You should live it. Experience it, you know, instead of capturing it. I'm very strange in the sense that I, part of my process is capturing it to... Part of the living for me is capturing the process. So it's, it's me taking photos. If I went on a vacation and I didn't have a camera with me, I, I think I would feel very bo liao, like very waste time. Like I'm, like, I'm seeing all these things and yes, I'm experiencing it, but I would be extremely frustrated to see all these beautiful things go by and not be able to capture them. So... It's interesting to see what people, other people consider tourism. You know, I mean, we go and see beautiful nature, and people go and see power stations. Whatever floats your boat, that's cool. Uh, if you are scared of germs, this will freak you out. Because, yes, not necessarily the cleanest, you know. I, the crazy thing about China that I really had fun trying to shoot was just the sense of how big everything was. Have any of you ever been to like, don't talk about the big cities, but like the small towns. You have a small town with very few people and you have a huge train station. And then you have like a town with like um, two-story, three-story buildings. And then you have a mega complex like that. Like one mega complex. So you drive past, you take a train by and it's all empty. And, it's all low, and then you have like Forest City. Lah. You have like Forest City that is like huge. And it's like mind-blowing. We all know how this lady feels, right? Like when the kid keeps asking you, can I use your phone? And then, you know, you're going... I was actually shooting the speed. And then I was like, hey, but the lady looks very poor thing. So I'm going to continue that. Everything's just big, huge. Like, and literally, this was the only guy that came out. You know? So yes, when you're traveling, things are new, things are interesting, things are fun. I try to make it a point to take an airport picture every time I go somewhere, just and try to make it different. In Korea, they're so nice; they even give you the frame. They're like, "No, nah, no, nah, take through here," so you can't like not do it, right? Different pastimes. Whatever floats your boat, if you like it, sure. Um, now, I've, the scariest thing about shooting this with normal cameras back in the day was that all the powder goes into your camera and then you can't, like, you have to send it into the shop, they have to break it apart to fix it. So, okay, la, phone not so bad. La. Smaller, you can kind of like tuck it in under your shirt. Sometimes when you're so for me, it's work. Oh, I see these people running outside. Sorry. Um, when you're, whenever I'm someplace for work, I will be waiting. Sometimes a lot of times you get there and you wait for something to happen. You wait for the, the shoot to start. And I always like looking out windows and I always like looking down and looking for, for reflections and shadows. And especially in tall buildings, tall places, right? Cities, you get interesting things. So this is literally same, same, but different. Like, it doesn't get more city, and it gets rural, but it's the same image, different light, different place, very different feels, but essentially the same thing. This is outside right now. The same thing, people are doing this. It's a live feed, right? Yeah. So, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes I like pictures that have emotion, right? Pictures that, that, that give you a sense of connection with the people that you're shooting. But every once in a while, it's just nice to take pictures of something graphic. And it must be tourists every once in a while now. Have to do the tourist thing.
So you don't always just have to shoot your lunch. You can shoot your lunch and the lady cooking it or preparing it. Getting lost, again, I'll talk about getting lost. Um, you can prepare when you travel. You can shoot what you want. Um, but please don't pre over prepare. Don't set your itinerary. I'm walking from A to B to C to B. I'm going to see, do, see, see these things. I have a very bad habit of telling myself I'm going to go someplace and relax and do nothing. And then I'll feel like very bohua if I'm sitting there in a coffee shop drinking coffee. And I've never been to a place. So I inevitably end up walking and I go to random places. And then when you go to random places, you see random things and things that you look at it and you're like, wow, that's kind of cool. And this is all man-made. This is part of an exhibition uh, on urban planning. And on the other side, it's the same thing. They've got this huge staircase to heaven kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's about, it's about getting lost. It's about walking. Or sometimes it's about making your way to some place that's been shot before and trying to do something a little bit different. Unfortunately, these are not very different from what everybody's been shooting, but still quite cool. Uh. Surprising how long it took people to walk past this, but um, this was the war monument, I think, in uh, Korea, uh, in South Korea. So, so I think sometimes we're all very, we want it. Every time you look at pictures with influences, right? It's like all oh, very empty. Then behind, like very chill. Uh, for me, you know, embrace the mess. I'm not going to go and look for the thing that's not there. The mess is everybody. It's very funny. Everybody's trying to get their little piece of quiet and like, I'm in this place by myself. It's so cool. So actually seeing everybody trying to do that is actually very funny. And of course, make use of everything that you have around you. The floors, the reflections, mirrors, uh, the crowds. The mothers came, mothership came back, and they're all so excited. So, very soon we're going to talk a little bit about some of the functions. Oh, sorry, this is the weirdest thing ever. This is a Hello Kitty rave kind of thing. Like, it's a party at, like, Sanrio Land or something, and it's, like, it was for the kids, right? But I, I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, that's too crazy. Can you imagine, like, it's really a rave, oh? like the kids are dancing. And, and of course, when your kids look down at butts, like, it's always fun. Okay, I'll just rush through some of these pictures. Oh, don't believe everything you see online. So I was like, Osaka, and I saw this picture of this aquarium, you know, and there are the whale sharks, and it felt like the RWS one. I was like, wow, that's so cool, I'm going to go there. And I go there, and I'm looking for that, and I don't find it at all. Because it turns out that they put the museum's name on it, but it's actually someplace in Okinawa. So I feel very cheated. By the end of the day, you make do with what you have, you shoot what's there. Okay, so all I can say is when you take pictures, find it, find a way to make it different for yourself. Find it a way to make something different. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about after this, and you guys are going to get to try your hands on as well, is Galaxy AI. Now, it's one of those things that I am very excited and yet very, I won't say troubled or disturbed, but it's, it's, it's exciting. The technology is crazy. 
Um, and I'm going to give you guys some demonstrations of that shortly. Um, but it's one of those things where you can take away things, you can erase objects. I would say that for me, as a photographer, I try to... In fact, I don't do that for the work that I do. Right? So if I'm out here, everything you see is real. But I can so see the draw of having a picture where almost there, and then some guy walks in the frame. Or um, you, you want to move something, you wish you could move something just a little bit, and the guy never really moves. So let me see if I can give you guys some example of that. Can we turn on the... So I won't do super a lot of talking on that, okay? But I just want to show you, this is actually kind of cool. Um, I brought my daughter for a motorbike ride the other day. And we were just like, okay, let's, let's go and see. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Right? And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this Galaxy AI thing and I'm going to see if I can move her. So I lasso her and I move her around. And then the crazy thing is it, it actually put in an engine for me where the engine was not there before, right? So like she was completely blocking the engine or blocking that part of the photo. But then the AI system actually goes in, it looks for relevant images online and kind of fills it in. It's completely mind-blowing for me. John, John, can you come up for a I need help. He's never going to come here again. But I just need to take a portrait of you here and I'll move you there. Can, right? Can, can see. It's good to have friends. Can, can. So, if I do a picture of John here, hey, give me a bit more sassy. Okay, fantastic. Thanks. So, th this is the... Oh, that's... Oh, okay, I'm dancing. Okay, so John's dancing. I wish I could make him dance with himself. But okay, so the cool thing... Can I? Okay. So a couple of things that are kind of cool. So when you get onto your, your edit program and you tap this Galaxy button, right? It'll say tap or draw over what you want to move. Again, quite mind-blowing. So if I just tap on John, it actually pretty much gets him pretty well. And I can actually move him closer to himself on the screen. And I say, okay, let's go ahead and generate that. So it's very cool, but good things take time. And if you're on a faster network, I've, I've realized that if you're on a faster network, it takes faster because it does do a lot of comparison in system as well as in the cloud. And I'm talking to, you know. What is that? No, this is the, your cloth that you are dragging with you, right? Is that, that. So you can actually, that's, that's wild, dude. That's kind of crazy. And so you can move things closer. So if I had moved John there, I could actually crop it down, move things a little bit closer to each other. Um, let's say, I was going to take a picture of you guys. As you can all see. And I decided that... I don't quite like the camera at the back. Sorry, man. And I said, oh, I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to go ahead and just edit that out. So I can, I can do this. And, you know, sorry, wrong. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I go here. As you can tell, I don't do editing so much, right? Okay, so this is object eraser that's actually kind of cool. And then I can just draw around this. And I can erase it. And it kind of, it's, <laughs> it's actually pretty good, man, in the sense that, it's, okay, you can see a bit of the tripod legs, but we can touch that up, right? But I, I think it's amazing that Three years ago, three, four years ago, only professional photographers with like a proper Photoshop setup and a laptop could be able to do something so easily. And now it's just like literally tap, erase and stuff. I mean, is it cool? I think it's very cool. Um, and I think that 
it's great um, if you want to use it. But one of the good things that I like that they've done is that when you do the AI feature, so the erase is not so bad, but let's say if I did the, the one with John earlier, or let's say I do one with my, my, one with my daughter, uh, Samsung actually quite zitong. They put that little bottom on the bottom left, that little star thing, they watermark it to let you know that, okay, this picture has been worked on. So as a photographer, I actually do kind of appreciate that. Um, don't say that we can just crop it off. I mean, it's not very difficult to do that, but it's an effort in the right direction. Uh, and if you actually go in the metadata, it also says that it's been edited, that it's been had AI filters applied to it. So that's kind of cool too. Okay, we can go back to the other screen. Oh, okay, yeah. So, with that, I'm going to end the talk on travel photography. I'm here. But what I would take this opportunity, please, to walk around, try out the, the systems, the cameras over there. There's a bunch for you to try on.